Episode 2 of the Hashira training arc is filled with a lot of backstory, more accurately the water Hashira himself, Giyu Tomioka. I honestly didn't think they would explore Giyu's backstory this early on in the season, but regardless, I'm glad to finally see it animated. The episode opens up exactly where we left off with episode 1, where Lady Tamayo is asked to visit the Ubiyashiki mansion to collaborate with Shinobu. Yushiro comes bursting through the door just as Kageya's crow is flying off. He would be panicked, asking if they they would need to move again, indicating that this is not the first time, but Lady Tamayo would let Yushiro know that they would be moving again, but this time may be the last time, as this is the final fight against Muzon. We would also get some monologue from Tamayo, who would wonder if everything is set in motion now because Nezuko has conquered the sun, but she would then pause knowing that everything was set into motion back then, referring to the battle of Yurichi versus Muzon, which I hope they show more of Yurichi's backstory soon, as well as showing the full fight between the original Sunbreather and the King of Demons, as I believe Yurichi is one of the best characters from the story. Plus, getting to see his story animated would probably look amazing. Afterward, we would cut to Kageya, who has written a letter for Tanjiro, asking him to check up on Giyu and find out exactly what he's dealing with. For those that remember, in episode 1, Giyu was acting pretty weirdly towards the other Hashira and decided to isolate himself. It should be stated as well that Kageya also looks really bad at the moment with his illness, so so I can't imagine he has a lot of time left, which is probably why he wants to make sure Giyu is doing okay. Tanjiro would of course take this mission on, but just before leaving would ask Aoi for some advice on how to cheer someone up. Aoi would be a little bit unaware of how to respond, but would come back to Tanjiro with some delicious rice balls, telling Tanjiro to share the food with that person. We get some comedic relief when Tanjiro does check up on Giyu, and maybe it's just my personal opinion, but despite Demon Slayer having some intense battles and emotional moments, it knows how to be hilarious with its comedic relief moments. Tanjiro would ask Giyu if he was angry with him since Tanjiro was able to get a hint of anger off the water Shira, which is when we finally get revealed that Giyu wanted to step down as the water Hashira and believed that Tanjiro should have been the next water Hashira. The only problem is, Tanjiro has gone down the path of learning sun breathing techniques, so Giyu now feels as if he has to continue being the water pillar. Tomioka would then leave the room with nothing more to say, but Tanjiro is unsatisfied with his answer, which then leads him to pester the water Hashira for many days, following him day and night almost in a stalker type way. But Tanjiro is hilarious here, playing it off with his goofy attitude. Tomioka finally cracks and opens up, and this is where we finally find out about Giyu's backstory, which I did cover in a recent video where I ranked all the Hashiras. Make sure to check out that video after this one if you would like to know any of the other Hashira's backstories. So to put the story in short, Tomioka grew up with his older sister, but just a day before her wedding day, Tomioka was attacked by a demon and his sister sacrificed herself to save Giyu. He would try to tell people about this incident, but no one believed him, and because of this, Giyu would slowly lose himself and would one day bump into Orokodaki, where he would take Giyu in to learn water breathing. While training, Giyu would meet a boy called Sabato, who was a similar age to him and had a similar backstory. Both Tomioka and Sabato would train day and night together honing their water breathing techniques until they were finally ready to enter the final selection. Right from the get-go, Tomioka is injured by a demon and would be in too much shock to even move. Sabato comes in and saves Giyu from the demon but before Giyu can even get his bearings and thank his friend, Sabato runs off to help other slayers and behead other demons. Sabato pretty much killed every demon on the mountain apart from one, the Hand Demon, who of course brutally kills Sabato. Now for those that remember, the Hand demon was shown all the way back in season 1 when Tanjiro entered the final selection exam and it's the same demon that Tanjiro would then defeat in the final selection exam. Tomioka ended up passing out from his injuries and when he awoke the final selection had ended. Even though Giyu didn't slay a single demon and was unconscious most of the exam, he was still deemed a slayer as the only goal you need to achieve is to survive for 7 days on the mountain. This is why Tomioka has an inferiority complex. He believes that he shouldn't be a Hashira because it was Sabato that saved him. He also believes that Sabato should have been the one alive right now and not himself. Tanjiro would think on these words, sympathizing with the water Hashira, knowing that he's felt the same way when Rengoku was killed. But then Tanjiro would think back on what Inosuke said, which is that Rengoku believed in them so they just have to measure up to that. So Tanjiro would yell out to Giyu, asking him if he'll continue what Sabato entrusted him with. Tomioka is completely stopped in his tracks by this statement, even thinking back on a time when Sabato 
Bale slapped him for saying that he should have died alongside his sister. Sabato is angered by this statement, which drives him to slap Tomioka and tells him never to disrespect his sister's memory like that again. Sabato would then continue further by saying that Giyu must live so that his sister's sacrifice won't be in vain, which is probably one of the fundamentals for why Giyu has gotten this far and pushed himself to get even stronger. Throughout this episode as well, you may have noticed that Tomioka's Hayori has changed a lot. His Hayori used to be plain red, which was in respect towards his sister as she used to wear a dark red kimono. Then when Sabato passed, Tomioka's Hayori changed again to what we see today. Two halves of his life betrayed into one piece of clothing. One half represents loss of his sister, the other half represents the loss of Sabito. Tanjiro would feel bad for saying those words to Tomioka, wondering if he went too far with it, and would think about how to solve the situation. Just as Tomioka is about to turn to Tanjiro to tell him that he'll be joining the training program, Tanjiro quickly asks if he would want a cold soba eating contest. I find it funny as well that these two even eat in synchronization as well. And once again, just showing off the perfect amount of comedic relief to balance out that sad backstory. Tomioka would then comment on the training program once more, but would ask about Shinobu, as Tomioka doesn't actually know her role in it yet. But Tanjiro would reply that Shinobu wasn't taking part. Which, speaking of Shinobu, we would cut to her being by herself, where she would seem angry and would try to control her emotions. Kaneo would then speak with her, asking if her training could wait until after the stone her sharers, but Shinobu would reply that she wasn't taking part in the training program. Kaneo would be confused by this and was hoping that Shinobu would have taught her more. Shinobu would then change the subject and make a comment on Kaneo talking more, which is true. If you compare the Kaneo that we first met to the Kaneo that we know now, it would seem that Tanjiro had a massive impact back then on how much Kaneo talks now. Shinobu ends off by saying that it's finally time to talk about the demon that killed her older sister and how Shinobu is planning to defeat that demon, referring to upper rank to Domo. It would seem that next episode we'll be getting more of Shinobu's backstory, which is another sad one, so make sure to have your tissues ready for that episode. I know that with the arc being called the Hashira training arc, we've not seen much training yet, but the arc serves more as a way to explore each of the Hashira's backstories and motivations. Like I said earlier, I'm genuinely surprised that we got Giyu's backstory this early on in the season, and next episode we'll be getting Shinobu's, but I suppose that leaves the rest of the season for the other Hashiras to have the spotlight. Not to mention some great moments from the training arc, which I won't spoil. As always, if you're going to discuss manga spoilers in the comments, then please use a spoiler warning. Click on this video next if you would like to see more from me, Internet Stranger. If not, then I hope you have a good day. Pine Tree, logging off.